Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and welcome to John Schaefer's At The Gates. So this game got released on Steam today, after a long period of development. It's being made by, by one guy, John Schaefer, <laughs> as the title would suggest. And um, yeah, this is one of the guys behind um, Civilization V. This is one of the things he's known for, and Civilization V was really good. Especially after a few expansions smoothed out every... You know, Civilization has a history of releasing a game that's at first a little bit bare bones and then they get an expansion, it gets a little bit better and they have another expansion and that kind of nails the game down. And Civilization V did just that and many people still consider Civilization V with both expansions pack, uh, yeah, both expansion packs added to be one of the best 4X games around even after Civilization VI came out. So now, he went full indie mode, and he started making his own game, and it took about seven years to make this. So, it's here today, and I've never played it before, but we're going to jump right in, and we're going to have to, l yeah, we're going to have to learn as we go. Because, well, I don't know, anything, yeah. <laughs> so we get to choose our tribe, and the only one that we can choose right now are the Goths. So let's see. Play as Alaric of the Goths. Unique ability. Starts with 15 food and 100 treasure. The default is 10 food and 40 treasure. Okay, well, nothing... I don't know if that is special or not. It sounds okay. But we have more clans here. We have the Huns, the Vandals, the Alemanni, the Picts, the Lombards, the Franks, the Slavs, the Saxons, and the Avars. And... I've followed the development a little bit, and if I remember correctly, we have to defeat these guys in the main campaign in order to unlock them as a playable faction. So, let's have a look. The Huns. To unlock a faction, you must either form an alliance with its leader or conquer its capital while playing as a different faction. Okay, so we can do two things. And Attila of the Huns has as a unique ability training horse archers and starts the game with one. Cannot own structures whatsoever. Interesting. And you have the Vandals, receives gifts of food or treasure from Rome every couple of years, locked in a permanent alliance with all Roman factions. Interesting. So, all of these guys have their own little thing. Now, the only thing that I want to level some criticism at is that we do not have the Frisians. Because I'm Frisian, we were around back then, and we were awesome. And we hardly ever get depicted in any kind of uh, history. So, yeah. For a future update, at the Frisians. We're very stubborn. That can be our unique ability. <laughs> anyway, let's start the game as the Goths. So we have three clans. We have Clan Detmar, low fertility, and they are gregarious. Um, we have Clan Ralph, passionate and efficient. That seems pretty good. Um, we have Clan Sorrel. They are violent and afraid of water. <laughs> That's interesting. Anyway, um, as you might notice, it has like a hand-drawn um, graphical style. And it looks pretty interesting. Like, it's clean. And, yeah, it should be pretty easy to establish what everything is. So we have a marsh over here that's pretty clearly depicted. We have a bunch of grassland. We have some forest tiles. We can also see it at the bottom right, what we are looking at right now. So it is currently impassable. It adds one supply from terrain, and it has plus 25% defense. So, yeah, we have a mountain. It is just impassable. That's about it. Uh, the forest. I don't know all the things. Who's next? arrow thing if entered so oh i guess that's movement or something i don't know we'll see so let's have a look what to do on the first turn your first order of business is deciding which of your three clans to train in what profession we suggest starting with an explorer next you need to choose a tech to begin studying we suggest starting with agriculture these are decisions you'll be making often 
All right, so this is another thing. We can mouse over these tooltips or like these, these things and we have a tooltip. Um, explorers excel at discovering any opportunity or threats that are nearby. They can cross rough terrain like hills and forests easily and are the only profession which can explore deserted locations. Interesting. I guess those are kind of like goodie huts. I'm not sure, but we'll find out at some point. Explorers are also extremely fragile and can neither attack enemies nor capture structures. Training a clan as an explorer on the first turn is often a good move, as this will give you more information with which to build strategies around. So the idea behind this game is it is also very much inspired by roguelike games. It's supposed to be very hard. We are uh, a small clan. We can only ever own this one city. Resources will run out in the early game. At some point in the mid game we should be able to unlock stone structures which will be permanent and we can kind of get a more of a hold on the terrain. But at the beginning all of these resources, for example this might be a wheat field, uh, we don't know yet. This will run out at some point and after it runs out we have to pack up all of our stuff, we have to move somewhere else and we have to keep moving a little bit. Now there's another thing where the factions around us, they don't start like we do or they don't necessarily start like we do. There's a chance that we start right next to a huge Roman Empire for example. Um, or one of the Goth, the Goths are extremely big or something like that, it's random. Some of these factions, they start already established on the map as a huge superpower. And you just kind of have to work around them a little bit. Anyway, um, let's press this button. This is all you need to do on the first turn, though next turn you'll have a shiny new unit ready to begin exploring or harvesting resources from the map. The most important task you need to address will always be displayed in the glowing button in the upper right corner of the world screen. So a new clan has joined. Right. Your growing fame has convinced Clan Detmar to leave the wilderness and join your tribe. They are low fertility and gregarious. Click the notification icon or press enter to learn more about them. Right click the notification to dismiss it. Um, Alright, let's just keep on going. Remember that you can read these tips again at any time by pressing the question mark from the world screen right there okay cool click learn uh click to learn more about blah 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 oh, now let's just click this and see what happens so clan detmar has joined our tribe we know our numbers might be small but we plan on working hard for you they're gregarious uh, let's see training time for social professions is halved gains no experience unless in a social profession no other clans on the tile may commit crimes never has desires never engages in feuds with other clans that seems okay but they're also low fertility um, family growth rate is reduced by one quarter, resource production decreased by minus 10%, resource production from constructed structures is also minus 10%, and their max health is also, oh interesting, okay. Um, next clan. Uh, joining your tribe will be the best thing that ever happens to us, we just know it, they are efficient. Resource production increased by half, resource production from constructed structures increased by half, okay. Passionate, minus one turn to train. Experience gained in all or disciplines, sorry, doubled. Obsessed with every desire. A likelihood of having desires tripled. So we can have some infighting between the clans as well, which is interesting. Um, and then we have Clan Sorrel. Your settlement is weak and vulnerable. With the right amount of iron and blood, we can fix that. They are afraid of water. Three turns needed to enter tiles with streams. Two turns needed to enter marsh tiles, and training time for water-based professions is doubled. So we definitely don't want to do that. Let's have a look. Likely to get very upset almost immediately if forced into a seafaring profession, trained as a fisherman or a galley. Okay, and they're violent. Power increased by half. Might very rarely engage in a mild feud if there is another clan on the same tile. Might engage in brawls. Crime, or a brawl is a crime every few years. Interesting. So... We probably don't want to keep these guys around. These might be our explorers. They might be ideal for that. Uh, let's see. Continued. Uh, your high level goals in the first few turns of the game are revealing the map around you with an explorer in order to find abandoned ruins. They are deserted locations that provide bonuses like free resources, but only if investigated by an explorer. It's also possible for some types to hide hidden danger, like bandits, so don't be too reckless. Okay? Um... 
and resource deposits you can harvest. Okay, then we have training clans as foragers in order to harvest the deposits you already know about. Training. Let's have a look. Your settlement is able to train one clan at a time and usually in a profession. Professions grant the clan the ability to harvest or refine resources, explore the map, fight enemies, and more. You can also train clans in a specific discipline by clicking on the Train Clan and Discipline button in the Clans screen. This can be a good way to get a clan ready for a role you know you wanted to serve in, but don't have the resources or have finished studying the target profession yet. Switching a clan from one discipline to another is free, and you can further increase its level in a discipline this way, but this requires spending parchment. So this is not entirely clear to me yet, but it sounds pretty cool. So. If we want someone to be maybe a miner or something, I don't know. Um, but we don't have the resources or the knowledge to do some mining yet. It seems like we can have him be a general worker in this area. And then later on we can refine that into a specific thing. Let's see. The discipline their profession belongs to. Which reduces the turns needed to train it in a more advanced pros professions within the discipline. Okay. We'll find more about that as we go along. If there's nothing you want to train during the turn, you can click the skip button on the bottom left corner of the clan screen in order to finish the turn. Okay. What a free. For the most part, you can use the map to guide your strategic decisions. Whatever resource deposits are available nearby should usually become the foundation of your economy, as even things you don't need can be traded for what you lack when a caravan is visiting. At the very least, you want a hunter, gatherer, or reaper soon before winter's chill takes hold. That's another thing, we have seasons in this game. Um, the temperature of tiles change throughout the year, and in the winter they will usually become cold. This shuts down the production of plants by farms and foragers, and usually forces you to subsist off of the food you've stored earlier in the year. A reaper. Can harvest wheat, barley and flax by moving to any tile containing a source. There's so much to read, man. <laughs> click, learn to click more basic game rules, basic economics. You know what? Settlement's idle, let's have a look. Uh, train clan in profession, in discipline, or produce treasure. When you give your settlement this command, it will produce a plus 5 treasure in this turn. However, in return you won't be able to train a clan in a profession or discipline. This should generally be avoided, as training clans is very important to developing your economy. Okay, so... Seems to me... Um, this is one of two approaches doing so. An ideal when you either already have a profession picked out that you know someone is going to end up with, but not who that someone is. I need an explorer who will be a good fit, or when you don't have anything in mind just yet and want to explore your options. The other approach is first choosing who to train by clicking on their clan card above and then selecting its new profession from the screen which appears. This is helpful when faced with the opposite dilemma. This clan needs something to do, let's see what they'd be good at. Alright, so we have clan Sorrel. Um, and I want them to be explorers. So that they're doing something now. Study a profession. Knowledge screen. Professions, the map. I don't know, man. Let's close this for a moment. Um, basic game rules. You'll mostly be interacting with your clans, which start inside your settlement and can be trained in various professions, some of which allow them to move around the map as units. The more clans you have, the more f you'll be able to do, but also the more food your tribe will consume. New clans arrive every few turns at a rate determined by how much fame you're generating. Okay. Resources are harvested from map deposits and dense forests by foragers, and later in the game by more efficient and expensive structures. Deposits eventually run out, so you'll need to continuously find new ones, at least until you're able to construct light or highly advanced stone block based structures which last forever. Each turn represents half a month, and eventually it will become winter. Most sources of food cease production during cold months, so make sure you have enough turns of food saved up before it starts getting chilly. Winter is usually around 10 turns long, so try to always have at least that amount. So let's have a look. Turns of food. Food is produced and consumed like other resources, but any surplus is converted and added to your stockpile as stored turns. You gain stored turns when producing more food than you're consuming, and lose them when the opposite is the case. Each turn that passes your tribe consumes exactly one stored turn of food. Ah, this is what we have right now. 15 turns of food. Right. Um... 
basic economics. One of your imp most important jobs is preventing your tribe from starving. You start with some food in your stockpile, but not enough to survive the winter. So make sure you start collecting more within a few months with a forager like a gatherer or a hunter. Yeah, I think we'll, we are going to need a gatherer. Um, other important early game resources include knowledge, which is what, you, what allows you to research new professions, and fame, which helps you acquire new clans faster. You can also use treasure to buy resources or sell ones you have too much of when the caravan is visiting. Cloth is necessary to expand your tribe's pop cap so that it can continue growing and adding new clans. All right. You have one settlement which can train one clan in a profession at a time, so try to plan ahead as much as possible. Training clans as foragers is important early on, as you want to start harvesting resources from the map as soon as possible. Later in the game you'll be able to produce resources much more efficiently by having clans construct structures instead. Cool. Researching new professions and their upgrades is important to keep your economy and military on track. Um, your best bet is to prioritize getting a basic resource, a refinement pipeline set up, harvesting iron and then turning it into weapons with your initial research choices, for example. Um, as this will give you something to sell to the caravan exchange for whatever else you might lack. Alright, uh, learn more about clans. Oh man, there's so much. Clans. Your clans are the main building block of your tribe. You start with three and will end a successful game with more than 40. Each clan can be trained in a profession which allows it to produce resources, do something on the map as a unit, like fight and explore, or provide some other effect. In addition to its profession, a clan can have a discipline and can gain experience and levels in it. This mostly determines how long it takes to train the clan in a new profession. Those in the same discipline are much faster. But a clan's mood might be affected as well based on its personality traits. Yeah, we saw a little bit about those guys uh, being afraid of water, right? So if we train them as fishermen, they will be very unhappy with us. Each clan has two personality traits which can be good, bad, or simply something to plan around. A clan's mood is determined by two things its traits, and whether its desire has been satisf satisfied when it has one. Happy clans receive resource production and combat bonuses, while unhappy clans suffer the opposite. Most clans will simply be content and require no attention. Okay. Each clan arrives with one family and will slowly grow to include more. Families consume a small amount of food per turn, and because their number continually increases throughout the game, be mindful to always have a plan for how you'll feed hungry new mouths. You can right-click on a clan's card to attach a color-coded note to it. For example, to keep track of what you want to train it in later. Okay. Professions. Each clan can be trained in a profession, of which there are two basic types, active and settled. Being in an active profession allows a clan to perform actions on the map, such as fighting, harvesting resources, and so on. Most professions are settled, which simply means the clan remains inside the settlement, and either refines resources or provides some other kind of economic effect. Okay. Only one clan can be trained at, at a time across your entire tribe, so think carefully about what you really want and in what order. The number of turns it takes to train a clan is based on the clan's discipline, its level in that discipline, and how high the level is of the profession in question. Being efficient is important, so try not to have clans switch disciplines too often, as this resets the level back to zero. Ooh, that's harsh. The effectiveness of individual clans can be improved by researching and then purchasing profession-based upgrades. Um, in general, you want to focus on training clans in professions which relate directly to your on-map situation. For example, archers for fighting bandits or a digger to harvest a mineral deposit. Right, research. You start the game only able to train clans in a few professions. To increase your options, you need to unlock more through research. Most of the techs you'll be researching will be professions but you can also unlock profession-based upgrades and even a handful of global permanent bonuses, which are usually quite expensive. Right, I have no idea what good is yet, because, well, I've never played this game before. So let's have a look. You can research one thing at a time and at a rate determined by how much knowledge you're producing each turn and the cost of the project you're undertaking. The tech tree is broken up into six branches, each based on a discipline. Researching any tech in a row will allow you to proceed onto any tech in the next row up. So don't feel the need to research everything, just to just prioritize what you need right now. Right, so one of the things we needed was agriculture. So we're going to focus on that. 
because it was suggested to us that, that we do so. <laughs> and it seems pretty good since one of our highest priorities is gathering food, so agriculture will definitely help with that. So, the first tech in each discipline, call it branch, is special in that it doesn't unlock a new profession, but instead allows you to choose one of your clans to level up in that discipline, making it faster to train them in professions in the same discipline. Uh, this is a little bit confusing for now, but we'll get the hang of it, I'm sure. You can press F1 from the world screen or use the big button in the far upper right corner to open up a research screen. We have, we've already done that. Right. Professions and basic economics, we've had those. Basic warfare, last thing. <laughs> For now, anyway. Warrior units have a few important statistics. First is power, which is a general metric of how strong a unit is in combat. In general, one unit or stack of units with double the power of another will beat up their foe, but not quite kill them. Defenders can receive bonuses for the terrain they're on, or for having dug in over multiple turns. Health is another important stat. It starts at 100, and if it reaches 0, a unit dies. As it drops, it also lowers a unit's power. Avoiding health loss is especially important on long campaigns, as units don't automatically recover health, I can only do so in the settlement by spending oil and cloth. Interesting. Morale is similar to a health, except that it recovers automatically each, each turn. Attacking units lose more health in combat, while defenders lose more morale. The goal of the attacker is to reduce the defender's morale to zero, which causes them to chaotically retreat from the towel, lose any defensive bonuses they had, and lose a huge amount of health as they flee. Another important factor to consider in warfare is supply. Each tile provides a certain amount automatically, which drops during the winter, and when without supply, for more than one turn, a unit will lose morale and health. Encamping temporarily provides a unit with supply, but makes it extremely vulnerable to attack, so plan your campaigns carefully. Interesting. So, oh my god. There's more. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, units. Yeah. A unit is simply a clan which has been trained in an active profession and now capable of moving around on a map. Uh, multiple units can be grouped together into stacks. Warriors, warrior units can fight and capture civilian units, which are defenseless and focus on economic activities like harvesting resources. Warriors can also capture or pillage enemy structures. This is interesting actually, the, the stacking up of units, because... Civilization V was the first game to unstack the army, to do away with this mechanic. And where you had like a warrior on one tile, the archers behind it on another tile, and so on. And this kind of does away with that. So, interesting. Each unit has a certain amount of move points, which determines how far it can move in a turn. Tiles with clear flat terrain cause one movement point to enter, and most units have free to spend each turn. Units also require supply from their tile and will lose morale and health if the supply provided by a tile is less than what they need. This is usually caused by changes in season or weather. Out on the map you'll also encounter units belonging to other factions. If you have a warrior unit, you can engage in combat or capture someone else's undefended civilians. But be mindful of who the unit actually belongs to, as some leaders can be quite strong. Right. Terrain. A tile contains one or more types of terrain, and this combination determines how difficult it is to move into, how much supply it provides units, and which types of resources and deposits can appear there. Rivers are an important map barrier, which you'll want to plan around carefully. Units require a full exit turn to enter a tile with a small river, and large, li large rivers are impossible to cross, except in the winter, when rivers can freeze and essentially become flat terrain with no additional movement cost. That's also a really cool thing. There are a variety of other seasonal and unpredictable weather effects which can affect the tile, including blizzards, floods, and droughts. At the gates map is very dynamic, and you need to account for this in your plants. A particularly harsh winter can unravel even well-prepared rulers, both economically and on the battlefield. Uh, geez, well, let's close this for now. <laughs> uh, finish the turn. Let's do something. I'd like to do something. <laughs> Alright. Clan Alram has joined a tribe. Uh, afraid of fire, Surveyors has joined our tribe. You may switch your clan's discipline to agriculture. A new clan has joined. So let's have a look. Alram. 
You have people who start and tend the village cook fires, right? Because we're pretty tired of having to deal with that ourselves. So they are surveyors. Uh, starts in the surveyor profession. Likely to get upset within a year if forced into a profession outside of discovery. And they're afraid of fire. So training time doubled in metalworking. Experience gained in metalworking is halved. And they will be very upset within a year if you have to, if you make them become a job like that, or give them a job like that. So let's have a switch disciplines. Leave to return to the map because they're surveyors, right? So if you can, yes, cool. So we can actually move these guys around now. I guess you can survey this. I don't know what this is. Large beehive. Cool. Identify deposit, construct a path. Let's have a look. Surveyors can construct paths in order to negate the movement penalty associated with rough terrain like hills and forests. Oh, interesting. Note that for an army to receive this movement bonus, both the tile it's moving from and the one being entered must contain a path. Simply moving onto or off of one has no effect. Okay. Let's identify this. Interesting that it's actually animated. I suppose it will take a turn. Study a profession. Knowledge screen, agriculture, reapers, gatherers, livestock. Wait. Learning this stack will allow you to study new professions and upgrades in livestock. Once finished, it also provides you a one-time opportunity to give a settled clan two free levels in livestock, reducing the number of turns needed to train it in professions within the discipline. Okay. So this is all stuff we have. Then we have harvesters. Harvesters double the production of gatherers and reapers. Training them requires tools. Let's have a look. So I think I saw... Let's have a look. Yeah, an unidentified animal. We might be moving over in that direction soon. So let's have a look. Let's do livestock. Right, so we're finishing livestock and explorer within one turn. This guy is identifying this stuff. The settlements. Each of the ten major tribes, like yourself, possesses a single settlement, which functions similarly to cities in other 4X strategy games. The big difference is that you'll only ever have one. Right. The settlement contains all of your tribe's clans, except for those you train in active professions, and it can also train one clan in a profession at a time, because you'll only have a single settlement. How you choose to use this pipeline is very important. Another unique feature of your settlement, compared with cities in other games it is that it can pack up and move around the map, something that will become necessary as you eventually use up the resources near your starting location and need access to more. Relocating should be a careful strategic decision though, as packing up prevents your settlement from being able to train a clan. The settlement also has a control level which determines how far your borders reach and in turn allows your units to construct structures and receive free supply during the winter. Right resources. I think this is the last one for now. <laughs> That's a lot of information for turn one. We're not going to get very far this episode, I think. Um, resources are one of the two fundamental building blocks of the game's economy, clans being the other one. Your main source will be harvesting deposits. Deposits, sorry. Though it is possible to harvest timber from dense forests. Uh, you'll use foragers to harvest your resources the first couple of years before you start constructing structures and can supplement this production with purchases from the caravan if it's visiting. Foragers, and this is one of our foragers, no? Yeah. Uh, and timber-based structures deplete and then eventually exhaust the available resources on the towel. So you'll usually need to move your settlement a couple times in order to find more. In the mid-game you'll be able to found a kingdom, settle down in one place, and construct stone block based structures that last forever. Food is the most important resource, as you, if you ever run out, your tribe will starve. Treasure is also very useful, as it can be used to buy a variety of resources from the caravan, as well as upgrade it with new wares, and even ply neighboring leaders with gifts. So, us starting as the Goths with the extra 60 treasure is actually pretty powerful, I think. Your fame is what determines how often clans join your tribe, and there are a handful of professions which can help you produce more. There are three types of resources, plants, animals, and minerals. Each is useful in different ways. 
Harvesting resources is important, but you'll eventually want to also refine them into more advanced resources, such as iron into weapons or wool into cloth. Many professions you can unlock through research relate to resource refinement, so refer to the tree for ideas on what strategies you can pursue. Oh my god, it keeps going. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind learning this game, but it's not terribly exciting to watch right now. I know, I know. But eventually we're going to have to start doing more interesting stuff, I guess. And it does give you a good idea of what is what exactly. So you can produce resources from map-based deposits and dense forests with a clan trained in a foraging profession. Once your economy is more advanced, you can produce even more by having a clan in an appropriate profession, like a farmer or a miner, construct a structure there. Many deposits start off as unidentified and you'll need a forager of the right type, like a digger for a mineral deposit, or a more advanced surveyor figure, a surveyor figure to figure out what they are before you can harvest any resources from them. Oh, so the surveyor is actually pretty advanced. It can identify any kind of resource instead of a specific one. That is good, because that is what we have. Uh, harvesting resources from a tile depletes and eventually completely exhausts it. The only way to avoid this is by constructing advanced stone block based structures, which both last forever and can have their production increased by assigning apprentices to them. Another way to increase resource production is by training clans in synergy professions, which boost the output of other clans, like a bread maker. You can also improve individual clans by researching or study and then purchasing profession-based upgrades using a button that appears on the clan card. Okay. Structures. I think this is the last one, finally. <laughs> Structures may be built by clans trained in special professions that have the ability to do so. Um, like a farmer or a miner. Enemy structures can be pillaged by warrior units and even seized permanently, although the output of the occupied structures is greatly diminished. Constructing a structure costs either timber or stone, depending on whether you want a basic, temporary structure or an advanced, permanent one. Stone block based structures are incredibly useful, as they last forever and can even have apprentices assigned to them to increase their production. But they're quite expensive, so don't expect to have any until at least turn 50. Ooh. Timber structures are also useful, but it usually makes sense to train one or two foragers first, as this allows your economy to get off the ground without committing you too far in any direction. Investing heavily in structures can make sense when you start in or near a large forest. I don't know if this is large, but time will tell. Close. Close. Food. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Food is an essential resource which your clans eat each turn. Should you run out, your tribe will starve. For, uh, already, we already know this. The caravan occasionally has food for sale, but don't expect to be able to reliably feed your clans this way. Food is different from other resources in that it enters your stockpile as stored turns rather than a fixed, spendable quantity. You're cons you consume exactly one turn of food each turn. The amount of raw food above your needs you'll be you're able to produce is turned into surplus. Oh my god. The amount of raw food above your needs you're able to produce is turned into surplus turns you can spend later. 100% access production equals plus one stored turn. Okay. In the first few turns, it's important to pick a deposit, usually a plant, you'll use to feed your growing tribe and train a clan as a forager to harvest it. This should last you a year or two before running out when you'll need to find a new, larger source and maybe something you can refine into even more. So I don't know, what was this? This was a large beehive. So this will last for a while. 18 turns of honey. Yeah. The caravan. The caravan is very important as it allows you to <laughs> exchange resources you have too much of for those you need. This means you can build up your economy to harvest wool from sheep, turn that into cloth and then trade it away for weapons if you so desire. Don't be afraid to go all in on a resource. Okay. That's good to know. The only downsides are that the caravan isn't always available and its stock of resources starts off small. You can only exchange resources with the caravan three times per year, spring, summer and autumn, but not winter, so make those visits count. The initial stock of resources available to the caravan is quite limited, but by spending treasure to upgrade it, you can dramatically increase both the quantity and quality of what it sells. If you need more of something or something that's not yet available, spending treasure to upgrade the caravan can be a wide investment. Wise investment. Okay, cool. 
We just kind of keep going. Okay, there we go. Finally. Finish the turn. We can finally do some more interesting things. Clan Ottokar. Obstinate and herder has joined a tribe. You may switch your clan's discipline to livestock. Alright, so we have, first of all, our explorer. Right? And I think it would be wise to explore in this direction. Because we have access to water, which I think will be important. We have animals over here, which I'd like to explore. We have another river over here. So this might be another potential settlement place. Now this guy still needs two turns to identify this, so that is interesting. Clan Ottokar. Sure, we agreed to join your tribe, but we're going to do things our way. Got it? <laughs> They are herders. Starts with four levels in livestock, adds three sheep to the stockpile. Oh, interesting. Likely to get upset within a year if forced into a profession outside of livestock, and they're obstinate. Training time doubled in honor. Uh, experience gained in all disciplines reduced by one quarter. Likelihood of having desires is doubled. Might very rarely engage in a mild feud if there's not a clan on the same tile. So if we leave, if we leave these guys in the settlement, they're likely to want to do some uh, fighting here. Let's see, switch disciplines, choose a clan. What were you? Gregarious, training time for social professions halved, blah, blah, blah. Low fertility, right. Never engages in feuds, never has desires. So we can kind of do whatever we want with these guys, I think. Profession, unemployed clans, discipline, a livestock, level 2, okay. These guys have level 4, though. Meanwhile, we have efficient and passionate. So these could be very efficient producers of something. But for now, let's have a look. What do we want to do? Um, gatherer, honey. Because we have a honey patch, yeah. So let's do honey. In two turns, I think those guys will be trained. Study a profession. And then we have winemakers. This could be interesting because actually, ooh, we have a lot of different things now. We have livestock, so we get fishermen. Oh, that kind of unlocks the things above it, I guess. So we have the plowers, uh, the meat cutters, fishermen, ranchers. So none of these seem particularly useful right now. But we have winemaker. Um, alcohol from grapes each turn or alcohol from two honey each turn. We can refine the honey into wine and maybe use that to buy things that we might need later on. Yeah. Cool. Late May, 400 AD. Clans are idle. Right. Can you do something here? Dig in, encamp, move, skip. Um, right, so we'll just keep moving this guy. In one turn we'll have a gatherer, we'll move... See, not training clan, winemakers. You've identified a field of grapes. Oh, we have honey and grapes. Oh, interesting. We can go all in on the wine. So, the gatherers, let's move them over into here and we can tell them to forage. Let's have a look. We get plus two food per turn. So, this is going into our stockpile. This is very good. This is very useful. Now we have the surveyor. We have successfully identified this thing, but we want to explore something else. And I don't know, this might be a neutral wheat farm. But I don't want to go there yet, because I don't know if it's safe or not. But I want to know what these guys are. So we're going to go that way. Meanwhile, though, these guys... Oh, what is this? These are neutral, no? Spearman, three points, power of ten. A new clan is joined. Uh, gatherers. Uh, likely to get upset within a year if forced into profession outside of agriculture. And they are hoarders. Okay. Adds three food to the stockpile. Adds five treasure. Oh, that is really good. That is really good. Alright, so these guys are already gatherers. So we can tell them to leave. They can go onto the grapes. And they can start gathering that stuff. On the next turn, I guess. Right, um, now we have Ralph, Clan Ralph and Ottokar. These guys are herders, obstinate. These guys are really good at something, but I don't know what yet. I don't know what to do with those guys. 
I want to keep them around for producing something. But I don't know at what rate our uh, area of influence will grow. So... A discipline. Instead of training a clan in a new profession, you can spend the turn training a clan in a new discipline for free. Or training up a clan's level in their current discipline. This costs parchment. So we cannot actually go from 4 to 6 livestock, but we could level up something else. Oh wait. Um, Turn in a profession. Uh, so if we click on, for example, Clan Ralph, they can become Reapers. Gatherers. We already have a gatherer. Uh, a hunter. A digger. We have something close by, so this might be worthwhile, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Wood collector. And I think wood might be important. And we have a lot of forest nearby, it seems. So it might actually be a good idea. Uh, Clan Ralph, let's make you a wood collector, I suppose. Let's finish this turn. A caravan has arrived. Meanwhile, what are you? Clan Ralph. You were a woodcutter. Oh, that was really quick. Right, you guys will forage. Right, these guys, I think we're neutral still. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell though. Right, and these guys will, on the next turn, determine what kind of animal we have here. Meanwhile, the caravan has arrived, so let's have a look. We have fish, meat, and boards that we can sell. Or we could buy stuff. Ah, uh, so we have this. We could sell it for two or buy it for free, I guess. Sheep. We don't want to sell the sheep, but these are our only options. Meat, fish, and boards. I don't know what the boards will do. And I don't know how much this will cost. See, after spending 10 trash here, future cans will reliably have alcohol, parchment, cloth, weapons, tools, timber, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think this is actually... A good call right now. So let's close this. Settlement is idle. So train in a profession. To power. I don't know what that means. Can identify unidentified. Ah, oh, so this will give them extra power. Hunter. But these were herders. Hunters can harvest meat by moving into any tile containing an animal herd and foraging. They can also un identify unidentified animals. Hunters are also the first warrior profession available to you, though this isn't their primary job and so they'll have trouble in most serious battles. Training a clan as a hunter can be a good way to keep your tribe fed at the start of the game, but it seems to me that uh, livestock is different, no? It's hard to tell right now. Training discipline. Ah, warning. Once training is complete, Clan Altakar will abandon and lose all experience. And yeah, that's not a good thing. Maybe let's produce treasure. And we need to study something else. So, um, we can do honor in one turn, but let's have a look. What else is there? Ah, livestock, metalworking, crafting, discovery. Right, okay. So this is what we did earlier. Meat cutters, plowers, fishermen. I don't. We don't want them to be fishermen, so that's a bad idea. Ranchers. I guess it depends on what we, what kind of animal we get down below. Ill makers. Um, we need something more for that. Bread makers, harvesters. Beekeepers. Beekeepers doubles your production of honey. Training them requires timber. Ah, but we have that stuff around. So let's research this for now. 
All right, so we've been playing for a while already. I'm going to be putting a cut in here. It's just a very basic explanation, really. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get a bit more comp um, a li bit, little bit more regular gameplay in the next episode. Anyway, please leave a like and a comment below if you enjoyed this content and wish to see more. And I'll see you guys for whatever video I do next.